This video is brought to you by Bitmerge. Have you ever looked at computer or hard drive specs and wondered what they mean? In this video, we'll talk about how storage information is displayed, sometimes misleadingly. Let's start out by looking at bits and bytes. A bit is the fundamental unit of information and is represented in binary as either 0 or 1. A byte represents 8 binary digits, or 8 bits. If you want to learn more about bits and bytes specifically, you can check out one of these videos. Storage information is commonly displayed in two ways. On the left, starting with Kilo, we can see the decimal representation of bits and bytes, which is the most commonly used system. A kilobyte represents 1000 bytes, a megabyte represents 1 million bytes, and so on. These prefixes are commonly used in scientific fields as well as when referring to computer storage. On the right, starting with Kibi, we see the less commonly used binary representation of bits and bytes. A Kibi byte represents 1024 bytes and increases by factors of 2. Although the binary system is less commonly referred to than the decimal, it is in some ways a more sensible system because it matches the structure of hardware. For both systems, the prefixes can be used to talk about both bits and bytes. Adding one of the prefixes to bit or byte gives a valid unit of storage. For example, adding kilo to bit gives kilobit, which represents 1000 bits. Adding kibi to bit gives kibibit, which represents 1024 bits. The same principle can be applied to bytes. Now here's the problem. You might want to think twice about trusting your hard drive size. On the Linux operating system, when you see one kilobyte, you can be sure that it's 1000 bytes. The same goes for newer versions of OS X. On Windows, however, a kilobyte doesn't mean 1000 bytes, it means 1024, which, remember, is actually a kibibyte. When Windows talks about bits and bytes, they're reporting units in a way that they were reported before the IEEE standard was introduced in 1998. That doesn't mean they're wrong, it's just something you should be aware of. Here are three things that will help you when you're buying a storage device. Make sure you're getting the unit you pay for, that the device will work with your system, and that the size of the device is appropriate for your storage needs. Thanks for plugging in. Your thoughts mean a lot to us. Let us know what you liked, what we missed, and what you want to see next. And we'll see you back here soon.